Hey everybody, I am making this video because I have some concerns about AVFM and the direction in which AVFM is currently going. So I'm making this video uh, just in case AVFM decides to get rid of me or I decide to leave of my own accord. The reason I'm making this video is because I've noticed that AVFM is going in a direction that will not benefit the men's rights movement. Um, they do great work, and I will never say that they don't. The problem is with the ideology I see creeping in at AVFM, um, I also see the end of their ability to move forward. So I am making this video just as a precaution, hopefully I will never have to post it. Thanks for listening. I've been listening to a lot of videos by uh, people like Stardust and Barbarossa um, about the MGTOWs. That if you're one of those unhealed, hateful, spiteful um, MGTOWs, the problem I've noticed, especially in a lot of comments in a recent uh, video that Stardust mirrored on his channel is that when you have a way of life that is based on hatred, animosity, and not really you voluntarily going your own way, but basically being pushed into going your own way because of what you think society has done to you to wrong you, then there's a big problem. Hello. Hey, Paul. Hey. Hey, Christina. Hey, John. Hey, John. Yo. Hey. Oh, God. The kids are outside. Hold on a second. Can someone get Sarah, please? Sorry. No problem. no problem. I'm at my mother's because my, my my connection at home is shit. My router has somehow decided to be an asshole this week, so I'm waiting for the guys to come and repair it. So the only way I can get on Skype right now is if I'm at my mother's. Oh, I'm sorry you had to drive out there for this. Uh, okay. Oh, well, she I... lives five minutes away, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, I understand, for, at least from talking to John here, that you're pretty upset. And, you know, I, I guess I understand why uh, about the message I sent you. Um, you know, Well, I didn't get a message. You didn't get a message? No. You, you didn't get an email from me? No. Well, I, I sure sent it to you. Which, uh, hold on a second. Guys, would you go, please? Go! Uh, which email did you send it to? Uh, hang on. I'll pull it up right now. I have yeah, no. a mess. I got a, a CC of it, and it is eleven the... days. It is eleven days old. It was sent on May twenty second, Paul. No, no, it was sent on June first. Okay, this that's was the more recent one. The, but there is voice... also one you sent on the twenty second. The the a voice for men email address doesn't work for me. Um, the, let me. The... Uh, all right, hold it. I'm going to forward this right now. Um, what email address will you get? The one that's been working is the one that I sent you a couple times before. It's twbbee at gmail.com. Yeah, at gmail.com. Let 
we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and forward this. All right, that's, uh, Okay, now I forwarded it to that address. I'm sorry, that's the only one. When I went to type your address in, in the um, in the two line, Christina, that's the, the address that came up. Was the a voice for men? Yeah, no, the AVF, the the a voice for men one. Um, John made that one for me a while ago because I asked if I could have an AVFM uh, email address, but it doesn't work for me. I can't get it to work on my Outlook, so I've been telling everyone to use the uh, the other one that I just gave you, so um, pro just a, it was just a mistake. Well, okay, uh, are you able to access that now? Uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm just updating the, uh, the email uh, thing. Well, the one thing that I want you to see, I mean, I can understand certainly if you heard through, heard through third parties and didn't get this email, why you would be upset. I don't blame you for that at all. But I think if you read this, while you may not agree with all of it, Christina, you will see that I have not thrown you under the bus, nor did I have any intention to at all. Okay, well, hold on. Let me just, uh, come on, silly honey. My mother's connection is slow, so it's not like mine. I'm used to a much faster connection. No problem. Take your time. We'll get there. Oh, eventually. Okay, let me see if it'll open. Come on. Really? Why is this thing not working? Oh, here we go. Okay, let me read it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So it's the MGTOW thing. Well, it's it's the, the the constant public conflicts with elements of our community that well, that we support. You know, I have to say, and this is me. This is not not anyone else. Um, I came. From obviously, I, I came across uh, AVF, uh, well, AVFM, the men's rights community, mostly because of what happened in the atheist community um, with right. that whole Re Rebecca Watson, PZ Myers, you know, feminist bullshit. Um, and I, I came into the community, um, be, you know, I was like, oh, okay. You know, men's rights, it's it's all about facts, it's all about logic, it's all about, you know, and I was, I was like, I was ready to go. I'm like, all right, rock on, somebody finally is interested in, you know, facts, logic, uh, you know, things that make sense. Because that, to me, the, the whole, everything is based on facts and logic. If you ignore facts, if you ignore logic, if, if you ignore things that matter, then you end up with a false narrative, and you end up with things that, that, don't follow through logically to a conclusion. And the problem I have is when I read those those comments on Stard one of Stardust's uh, videos, which was a mirror, um, 
you know, I was kind of taken aback. I'm like, excuse me, I get that you are going your own way and that you've had shitty relationships with women or what have you. You know, I get that. I totally get that, okay? I mean, it's not just a guy thing. Girls go through it too, whether they have horrible, shitty relationships. I mean, I mean my God, if I can count them, I should by all rights be a female MGTOW, you know? But the thing is, I didn't like the 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 um, intellectual dishonesty. I mean, I don't mind if you go your own way, but don't give me this bullshit that somehow evolution could have foreseen feminism or that, you know, to generalize that all women are like this and that, you know, uh, women are inherently evil and women are... I'm sorry, you know, I, I, I'm all for men's rights. I really am. But don't tell me, especially the fucking MGTOW community, that women are to blame for all your woes. I Look, we're fighting feminism. We are fighting it. And I, yet... I get the point, Christina, but here's, a, here's another element of this. I'm a MGTOW. And I'm not, that's my point, Paul. I never said all MGTOWs. I never did. And everybody, all of a sudden, see, this is the problem. This is the problem no, I have. Is, no, I don't think, you need to let me finish. I mean, I, okay. I, I, I want to hear you out. Okay, but, all right. Go, but, go, go. I'd like to finish here. There yeah, yeah, no, no I've, like, got a lot, I've got a lot that I want to get out. Sorry. And that's fine, and I want to hear it. But I, I want you to hear this first, and it's something that, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to get around. Is okay, that there's well, no way that it, any rational let's, person... Let's give it a, look, let's give it a go if we can't, if we can't know, give it a go. Finish. Yeah. There is no way that any rational person can listen to that video and not think that you were shaming the MGTOW community. I listened to it twice. Other people listened to it. And the problem is, no one listened to it correctly. I never said all MGTOWs. See, this is the thing. I even specifically said, I said, this is directed at those ones that think like this. See, this is... And anyways, if you... I don't know what they're missing? No. no. Oh, good grief. Look, I got pissed off because what I've heard from Stardust and Barbarossa... And, 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 you know, people like them. All the drivel I've heard is contradictory. It's generalizing. It's, I have no problem with men going their own way. I really don't. My brother is, by all rights, I guess, a MGTOW. He'd never call himself a MGTOW because he doesn't really know what it is. But, you know, I guess if you were going to call him something, he'd be a MGTOW. Um, and I have no problem with that. Do your own thing. Go your own way. Don't get married. Don't get into a relationship. Don't have sex. Don't. I don't care because that's not my business. I really don't care. What I don't like is the intellectual dishonesty that's so pervasive in the main MGTOW movement when I'm talking about Stardust and Barbarossa and, you know, I guess they're their followers, people that that appreciate their videos, that like their videos and stuff. Um, because if you if you actually listen to it, they're contradicting themselves all over the place and they're making statements that that are just not true. I have a problem with, with intellectually dishonest information. I don't like it. And I can't sit there saying, Okay, yeah, that's that's good. Let's blame all women. Because, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm a woman. Well, and at the end of the day, I'm a man. We critique masculinity and the, and the feminine psyche and the masculine psyche all the time. It's a necessary yeah. part of this discussion to examine concepts like hypergamy, which are universal, and enabling of hyper hypergamy, which is universal for men. This is something that we do have yeah. to examine, Christina. Okay, I, I, I get that. But the problem I have is, okay, let, let me just say this, and then you can think whatever you want. But um, <clears throat> we're trying to fight feminism, right? No, we're trying to fight. No, that's, that's, I'd say that's wrong. That's not our only battle by any means. Misandry no, no, is the battle. It is, no, 
it's not the only battle, but it is one of them. It is it is one of them, right? Okay. Uh, we admit that, that feminism has led to the victim complex of the woman, right? And and it, it treats women like children and it you know, it's I mean it's insulting. It's insulting to women. Um in for most part. Um excuse me. I see a lot of what's going on in some, and I'm not saying all MGTOWs, but I'm saying in some of the MGTOW community, the same fucking thing. I have heard, I want a safe space for men. I have heard, um, you know, a victim, victim, victim complex over and over again. I can mirror so many things from that community to, say, the atheism plus community. And how is that helping men? How is that going to help anyone? See, that's the thing. I, I have no problem with people who choose to go their own way and just do their own thing. But when you start spouting drivel and demanding safe spaces and, and doing this shit, you're reminding me of why I left the atheist community. Okay, let me put it this way. And I think it's a matter of having a, a little bit better... I think, fuller understanding of everything that we have to contend with here. When you have a community, and I explained it this way to, just recently to a, a writer for McLean's magazine that looked at some of the angry statements at women, and she was dealing with the comments at, at a boys for men, is that we have a community of guys that have full of, that have knives that they've just pulled out of their backs. That's what is populating this community a lot. Now, yeah, I, we, can, we can take the position that we're going to go in and try to root out anything they say that doesn't sound right to us because it's hypocritical and sounds like feminists, or we can understand the nature, the dynamic of the community we're dealing with, figure out where to draw our lines of battle, where it becomes divisiveness that hurts us and where we can help lead men to a more enlightened understanding of their problems and pass their anger. That's what we do, Christina. It's how we help them. And yes, some of it involves a certain amount of tolerance for rhetoric and for ideas and for emotional expression that may not be 100% healthy, that may not be 100% of what we agree with. But what we don't do is go into a community full of men that are bleeding and borderline suicidal and start lecturing them like they're <laughs> children. I agree. I agree. Um, and that's my point here. It's the same thing with the libertarian deal. All right, I get you don't believe libertarians are uh, is a good political philosophy. But screaming at libertarians that they need to get the fuck out of the MRM? I, first of all, I never screamed at anyone that they should okay. get out of Okay, I'm sorry, rephrase. Telling libertarians that they don't belong in the men's movies. I, you know what? Seriously? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just address the MGTOW thing first. Um, okay. Or, or the, the wounded man thing first. Um, I get it. I get. Don't think I'm so stupid that I don't get that men are. I don't think hurt. you're stupid. I'm arguing against the case you're making, Christina. It's that's okay. not calling you stupid. My, I'm responding my, to what you've said. Okay, and my view is a little different. My method is more own your shit, and I'm not going to treat you like a child. Okay, and you're and you're entitled to that, but I've got to pull a bottom line here. I have an obligation to the reputation of a voice for men that if we've got somebody that's got a word like senior editor by their name, that they demonstrate the compassion and the big picture mentality enough to know the difference between that and what, what I'm talking about. That's not something I can negotiate. I'm not, I'm not that's trying that's to, uh, uh, Paul, to do anything else. Paul, I, I, I mean, I'm... <laughs> Look, I'm not begging for my position back at AVFM. No, I know I know. Not. I'm just I, trying to help you understand why I don't really have a choice in this matter. I, look, I get why you don't have a choice. I mean, you, 
you do have a choice, but you don't. I get it. Um, but I'm personally, look, I have compassion for men up the yin yang. I do. I know you I do. Really, I really do. But when I start seeing men festering in their in their in their issues like feminists do, then I have a problem. And there's, well, the there's, thing there's, is, those men have a bigger problem than you do. Well, and and this is something we have to keep in mind. Yeah, you have an issue with it. But, Christina, you're turning your issues and concerns with that into a chip on your shoulder with the whole community. And it's well, not reason, working. Look, you want to know why I got pissed off? I was completely ready to drop it. I was. I, after the first video I had done, I was like, you know what, this is stupid. I'm just going to let it go. You know? You want to know why I, I had to keep going with it? Because Dean put a video up on AVFM that was directed at me on AVFM. So how does that make me feel? Well, how does here's the deal. Look? Yeah, I understand. But this is, again, I, you know, the only thing I can say to that is, is that I... I that wasn't uh, that video went up without my knowledge. I don't know if I would have approved it before it went up. I don't know if it would have just added to the fire. But the problem well, is did. the original added- content anyway, Christina. You're acting like somebody who is lecturing these men instead of trying to help them move past their anger. And that is clear as a bell to me. And so there is blowback from that. There is resistance. And I understand it. I so think how, do I, how do I, Paul, how do I help them move past their anger? You, one, you be prepared to, to accept a certain amount about it. Uh, when I, I, some, I made a comment the other day, I, I think it was around Sue's and, and some others, that I really had a lot of respect for the women in this movement, that when I look through the, some of the comments there and some of the sentiments that are expressed about women, that um, people like 100% Cotton and Sue's and stuff, I just, sometimes I didn't know how they did it, but, but they must have tremendously thick skins. And she came back, Sue's came back with the perfect answer. She said, it's easy for me because I understand where this stuff is coming from. She really gets the nature of the problem, is that when you've got guys that have had their children taken away, that have lost their homes, their jobs, their freedom, their reputation, stepped on in every possible way legally, their friends and family have turned on them, the whole society has told them to man up and shut the fuck up. They're hurt and angry, and they some of them more than others are going to need time to vent, to release. And what we try to do at ABFM is operate a pressure cooker where we don't just pop the lid off and just let it all vomit out. And at the same time, we have to let enough out so that it doesn't explode. And when you approach them as a blanket, as a community, and start talking about what you should and shouldn't say and what you should and shouldn't think and what you should and shouldn't feel, you're only repeating what's already happened to them. They're not going to see it any other way. And you have to understand that. I suppose, um, I, yeah, I mean, I suppose I, I'm not much of an enabler, but, um, I I get where that's going. Um, you know, look, I know society's against men. I'm not stupid that that's how I got into this, you know, (laughs) like there's huge inequalities in, in the, in the court system, especially, um, you know, I, I see it. That's why I fight for it. You know, I'm. When I read Erin Pizzi's book, she she's a huge um, influence on me. Um, one thing stuck with me, and that is that when she was working with the women, um, you know, they would come right to the center and they would be like, oh, boo-hoo, you know, I was beaten and I was this and I was that. And she would say, okay, so stop feeling sorry for yourself and what was your part in it? And Let me tell you about an exchange I had with Erin about this. Because I was concerned. I mean, it was a really big deal to get her to put her name on ABFM. It was a huge deal for us. And Uh, I was really concerned about not just the comments, but the nature of some of the material that we write. I mean, it's, it is provocative. Yeah. And she wrote me back 
And she told me that it was a wonder that men were not exploding everywhere in society. And she thought it was a great thing that we provided a pressure relief for men to vent some of this out and that it was a necessary part of their healing to have it happen. And I agree with that entirely. Okay, so... It's hard. Maybe, look, okay, maybe I've been going about it the wrong way because of the way that I've been told by men that have lived around me to deal with shit. You know, that I was taught, you pull up your pants and you get on with it. Well, you know, you, you know yeah. my, my dad, when he was dying from cancer, for Christ's sake, you know, he was scared, he was upset. I'd never seen my dad cry before in his life, and I finally saw him cry. But then he was like, you know what? It's not going to help anything. If I die, I die. I move on. That's it. And he just got on with shit. And he was doing shit right up until the la like until he couldn't do it anymore. And those are the role models that I've had. Well, and I understand that. And and look, I don't question for a minute your compassion for men and boys. That is not at play here. I don't question your sincerity. Uh, I like you. I've always liked you. I've always admired the, how hard you work and what you do. None of that stuff is in question here um, and, and never was. And I didn't want to make it sound like it was, nor do I in question your intelligence. What I'm questioning here is whether that you're grasping this part of our mission with enough cognizance to understand why it's critical that we don't create more divisions, that we don't lecture, that we don't send a, a kind of man up message, that our, our messages addressing things like misogyny and the movement are there. I mean, uh, I've, I've written stuff about that all the time and I'll continue to do that. And, and we succeeded. We have created a cultivated a community largely of men and women that are not full of ranting about women that are not misogynistic and we've done that because of very carefully controlled messages and bring focusing on unity and really honoring the experiences of men allowing them to express it and sort of nudging them in the right direction not hitting them, you know, w with a, a cattle prod and say, no, over here. Uh, that's why you're seeing the reaction that you're getting. Um, and that's all it is. It's this one focused area. And it's really, you know, no matter what happens here, Christina, I'm going to support your work. I'm going to support what you're doing with the Earl Silverman Center. And I meant what I said on the radio show, that I liked you a lot, that I support your work. And, uh, and I'll be the first to admit that probably three quarters or more of the people bitching and whining about what you had to say are not guys that are doing a fucking thing themselves. And I, I wouldn't mind saying that publicly at all. I really believe it. But I think you have missed an important part of the message here in not getting how we make this thing happen. And we do it through unity for, for anybody that's willing to get behind the issues of men and boys. I don't care if they're libertarian. I don't care if they're leftist. I don't care what their political beliefs are. I don't care whether or not they hate women. There, there's going to be certain limitations on their expression at ABFM, and we're going to try to gently lead them to understand that they probably really don't hate all women as much as they think they do. They probably are wounded and hurt and, and looking for somebody to give a fuck about what happened to them. And to not tell them to shut up and to not tell them to not talk that way, but to let them get it out until they can start having a healthier dialogue. That's what we do. And it's, it's real critical. And I think you missed the boat on that. I think you're, well, you're I, I, I think that people just aren't listening to what I'm actually saying because nowhere did I tell anyone to man up. Nowhere did I dismiss anyone's right to be angry. Nowhere did I do any of that. You know what I was doing? I was asking Stardust. Where is this uh, evolution could have foreseen feminism? I was just asking actual intellectual questions. I wasn't shaming anyone. You know what? But when they started to attack me for asking real questions, 
real, actual intellectual questions, then yes, I'm going to fight back. You well, don't attack me and I then ask me to look that, down. Christina, but, you know, if you can't see 300 people reacting, I mean, all this reaction, are you, are you really sitting here telling me that none of this reaction was about the way you delivered your message? Perhaps it was. But okay, still, then why don't but, you but, focus on that part of it? But let me tell you this. I, I don't like people like Chapin. I don't like people like Rocky Mastery. I don't like Chapin either, but Chapin's not the issue right now. You are. I was going to make an example. What I was going to say is, but some, and I do listen to their videos, because just because I don't like the person doesn't mean that they're always wrong. And, and you can find things you agree on. I agree with my, Rocking Mr. E on a couple of things. I don't agree with him on the this right-left crap, um, you know, but a couple of things, yeah, okay, he's right, you know, stop the clock is right twice a day, you know? I mean, the problem is, is no one seems to want to understand what I was asking. I was actually asking questions, and nobody was understanding and Christina, I, I, it's because you turn them off egregiously with the way you really? delivered your well, message. Well, because right off the bat, when I start asking questions, everybody jumps on me. And it's, See, how are we supposed to have a dialogue if I ask a question and everyone goes, well, you're a woman. Christina, so are you really sitting here inserting that the whole problem is that everybody in the world is, is picking on you? No. That please. is exactly what you, this is, this is why you're losing credibility. And no. I'm trying desperately to give you a door through this that works out for everybody, and you're just refusing it. And there's nothing I can do to help with that. The world is not picking on you, Christina. You delivered a message in a way Paul, that felt like Paul, it served up Paul. a trash can to everybody that heard it. And you don't Paul. be responsible. Paul. For it. And Paul. I can help you there. Paul. So there's nothing I, more. I know the world is not really. You think I'm not retarded? I don't think the no, world I is. No, I think you're retarded. I think you're. I think you've got a chip on your shoulder, and you don't know how to get it off. It's not a chip on my shoulder. Yes, it is. It's, I was, I'm seeing. So we're at an impasse here, Christina. I've done everything I can do. I tried to my best. Okay, to help but I'm just trying. Fine, but I'm not going to here and argue with somebody that cannot take responsibility for their own actions. I don't have time oh, for it. Oh please, Paul. I was just trying to explain my point of view. That's all. I don't expect you to take me back at AVFM, nor would I, I want to go back at this point. Back. I'm just saying I don't have time for this conversation anymore. It's a dead end. And with of course, because no one will see. No one. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a video to fill everyone in on what has been going on lately um, and why I posted the video yesterday about AVFM. When I joined AVFM, uh, at first it was quite an honor. I felt, you know, that this was a great place to be, um, where ideas could be expressed honestly and in a place where uh, facts and truth were respected. However, after being there for a few weeks, I realized that this was not entirely true. What I discovered was that the underlying message at AVFM is basically libertarian. Um, so anyone who doesn't toe the radical libertarian philosophy or line is basically an outcast even within the group at AVFM. John the Other took exception, uh, pretty much the worst exception, to me being against libertarianism. We had uh, many conversations where he just got very upset and ended up hanging up because uh, he just didn't want to talk about it anymore. And recently uh, we had a conversation on Skype, well not a conversation but we were typing to each other on Skype um, and he said, you know I'm a libertarian, right? And I was like, well duh, of course I know, you know, we've discussed this before. And uh, he, he was trying to 
I don't know, justify the libertarian stance within AVFM, asking me why I found that it didn't make sense, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and quite frankly, look, I mean, if you're a libertarian, that's fine. Just don't try and push it on other people, especially in a place like AVFM, where you say that politics is not going to be brought into the site. Uh, if you're going to say that, then mean it. Don't put up articles such as the one that was put up a couple of months ago with the five principles. Um, you know, if you're going to promote a certain political uh, position or certain ideology, then just be upfront with it. But don't give me this bullshit that, you know, uh, AVFM is non-political. Because uh, that's bullshit. You do have a political stance. You do have an ideology that you that you want to put forth. Um, so, you know, that would have been nice had that been a bit more transparent. Uh, but, of course, Paul will tell you, you know, no, 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 you know, we accept everybody regardless of, you know, their political affiliation or whatever. Yeah, they'll accept you, but they won't. They'll try to convert you into a radical libertarian, and if that doesn't work, then you just have to shut up. And that was one of the first problems that I had encountered when I got on board at AVFM. The other problem I had recently was um, that it seemed that AVFM was endorsing uh, the MGTOW uh, philosophy, um, which, by the way, isn't a philosophy, but um, that Paul was indulging people like Stardust and Barbarossa, um, who clearly are just radicals uh, who don't understand very much and like to spout a whole bunch of intellectually dishonest crap um, and Paul was supporting this and and I didn't find that to be acceptable because if we're going to be a men's rights movement that supposedly is concerned about truth and reality and intellectual honesty and facts I mean this is what they say they're concerned with um, then why would you endorse such a ridiculous, uh, radicalized position, such as the one that Stardust holds, or one that Barbarossa holds, um, and of course all the fans and followers that they have? Um, when Paul did the interview with Stardust, it, it was quite astounding to me that he didn't notice the constant contradictory uh, comments that, that Stardust was making, that he didn't realize the intellectual dishonesty with most of the talking points that Stardust had brought up, and that for me was something I just can't sit by and say nothing about. I believe in intellectual honesty. I believe in reality. I believe in facts. I believe in things being followed through to their logical conclusions um, and I also believe that you should not generalize a whole segment of the population which is what Barbarossa and Stardust and ultimately Paul are doing by saying that you know all, all women are XYZ and all women will act as XYZ and, uh, no I'm sorry um, if we're gonna go down that route then we're no better than feminists um, because as I see it um, the radicals for the MGTOW philosophy have turned it into feminism for men um, and there's some videos that I uploaded earlier uh, one's Critical G and the other one is Rocking Mr. E and they explain it really well so I encourage you to go watch those two videos um, anyways I spoke with Paul yesterday uh, after finding out through a third party that I was no longer with AVFM. Um, came as a surprise to me because no one had told me. Um, and Paul said that he sent me an email, which I never got. And he says, oh, I must have sent it to the wrong email address. Um, yeah, 
I had given him my email address on numerous occasions. Um, I had given my email address to John on numerous occasions, and John said he had tried to contact me too. Yet, amazingly, neither of them could think to use, um, you know, the proper email address that I had given them, nor could they think to maybe contact me on Facebook, which is what John did yesterday after I posted on Facebook about being steamrolled by Paul. Amazing how you can contact me when I start slamming you for the bullshit. But, you know, whatever. Um, if you want to believe that they actually tried to contact me when it's clear that they didn't. Um, and I will be playing a clip at the end of this so that you can see how obvious it is that, that there was no attempt to contact me. Um, and fine, but uh, no, there was no attempt to contact me. Basically what they did was they just erased me from AVFM uh, without any warning, uh, without any communication. Uh, Paul had told me on numerous occasions that I was his favorite MRA and, you know, that he was so proud to have me at AVFM and yada, yada, yada. And it was all bullshit. It was complete bullshit. I was only valuable to them while I was towing the line, while I was marching goose step with them. Um, problem is, I don't tow someone else's line. I don't shut up when I see something that doesn't make sense. Um, I call out bullshit. This is what I do. Um, and I guess Paul, not being able to control me, had to just shut me out. Because Paul likes to control the message. Um, he said this to me, which you will hear in the uh, upcoming clip. Um, so yeah, he likes to control the message, and he's endorsing the MGTOWs. Uh, he's supporting them. You'll also hear that. Um, you'll hear the conflicting date of when the email was supposedly sent to me between John and Paul. Um, and, you know, I know that this has happened to at least four other people where they have been kicked off AVFM with no prior warning. They just go to log in one day and they can't get in, or they hear it from someone else that, oh, I'm sorry, you're no longer on AVFM. Um, it's cowardly, and it's childish, and it's not a way that a professional would act. And Paul is in no way showing that he can be a true leader because leaders don't act like this. Leaders don't act like children. And the reason he didn't like what I said about MGTOWs was because it hit too close to home because he likes to call himself a MGTOW. Well, I'm sorry, it's okay if I jump down the throats of feminists or if I beat up on anyone we disagree with. But when I get too close to home, Paul, that's when you have an issue, isn't it? Well, grow the fuck up. Not everyone's going to agree on everything. And you cannot, I repeat, you cannot control the message.